U.S. Demography and Population Projections for 2020-2060 The year 2030 marks a demographic turning point for the United States. Beginning that year, all baby boomers will be older than 65. This will expand the size of the older population so that one in every five Americans is projected to be retirement age. Later that decade, by 2034, we project that older adults will outnumber children for the first time in U.S. history. The year 2030 marks another demographic first for the United States. Beginning that year, because of population aging, immigration is projected to overtake natural increase, the excess of births over deaths, as the primary driver of population growth for the country. As the population ages, the number of deaths is projected to rise substantially, which will slow the count tries natural growth. As a result, net international migration is projected to overtake natural increase, even as levels of migration are projected to remain relatively flat. These three demographic milestones are expected to make the 2030s a transformative decade for the U.S. population. Beyond 2030, the U.S. population is projected to grow slowly, to age considerably, and to become more racially and ethnically diverse. Despite slowing popular tie-in growth, particularly after 2030, the U.S. population is still expected to grow by 79 million people by 2060, crossing the 400 million threshold in 2058. This continued growth sets the United States apart from other developed countries, whose populations are expected to barely increase or actually contract in coming decades. The United States is projected to grow by nearly 79 million people in the next four decades, from about 326 million to 404 million between 2017 and 2060. The population is projected to cross the 400 million mark in 2058. The population is expected to grow by an average of 1 million people per year between 2017 and 2060. The rate of population growth is slowing. Since 2010, the population has grown by about 2 million people per year and it is projected to continue growing by the same annual rate until 2030. However, that rate is expected to fall to 1 million per year between 2030 and 2040, and continue falling to 1 million per year between 2040 and 2060. Because the number of deaths is projected to rise substantially, in 2060 the U.S. popular tie-in is projected to add about 500,000 people by natural increase, whereas net internal tie migration is expected to add more than twice that number, 1 million, to the population. The population is projected to grow more from internal tie migration than natural increase in coming decades because of population aging. As baby boomers age into older adulthood, the number of deaths is projected to rise faster than the number of births. As a result, the popular tie-in will naturally grow very slowly, leaving international migration to overtake natural increase as the leading cause of population growth, even as projected levels of migration remain relatively flat. America is graying. The nation's 65 and older population is projected to nearly double in size in coming decades, from 49 million in 2016 to 95 million people in 2060. As a result, the share of people aged 65 and older will grow from about 15% in 2016 to nearly a quarter of the population in 2060. The number of people 85 years and older is expected to nearly double by 2035, from 6 million to 11 million, and nearly triple by 2060, to 19 million people. The non-Hispanic white population is projected to shrink over coming decades, from 199 million in 2020 to 179 million people in 2060, even as the U.S. population continues to grow. Their decline is driven by falling birth rates and rising number of deaths over time as the non-Hispanic white population tie in ages. In comparison, the white population, regardless of Hispanic origin, is projected to grow from 253 million to 275 million over the same period. The population of people who are two or more races is projected to be the fastest growing racial or ethnic group over the next several decades, followed by Asians and Hispanics. The causes of their growth are different, however. For Hispanics and people who are two or more races, high growth rates are largely the result of high rates of natural increase, given the relatively young age structure of these populations. For Asians, the driving force behind their growth is high net internal migration. The nation's foreign-born population is projected to rise from 44 million people in 2016 to 69 million in 2060, growing from about 14% to 17% of the population. The previous historic high was in 1890, when almost 15% of the population was foreign-born. The native population is expected to add an over age of 1 million people per year, compared with 579,000 per year for the foreign-born population living in the United States. By 2020, 
Fewer than one half of children in the United States are projected to be non-Hispanic white, 49% of the projected 74 mil lion children under age 18. In comparison, about 72% of children are projected to be white, regardless of Hispanic origin. The share of children who are two or more races is projected to more than double in coming decades, from 5% in 2016 to 11% in 2060. The racial and ethnic composition of younger cohorts is expected to change more quickly than for older cohorts. In 2060, over a net herd of children are expected to be non-Hispanic white compared with over one half of older adults. America is graying. In 2016, some 49 million people were at least 65 years old, a number that will rise as America's baby boomers age into older adulthood. The country will reach the demographic milestone in 2030 when all boomers will be over the age of 65. That year, one in five Americans is projected to be an older adult baby boomers leave a significant imprint on the country's population. Between 2016 and 2060, the population under age 18 is projected to grow by only 6 million people, compared with a growth of 45 million for the population 65 years and over, Table 1. By 2034, the demographic scales will tip further, older adults are expected to outnumber children for the first time in U.S. history. The pattern should continue in coming decades so that by 2060 there will be 95 million older adults but 80 million children. The country will be grayer than ever before. Aging boomers and rising life expectancy will increase the older population as well. The population 85 years and older is expected to grow nearly 200% by 2060, from 6 million to 19 million people, Table 1. The country will also add one half million centenarians over the same period. These changes may be new for the United States, but the country will join many others around the world with already aging populations. By 2060, the United States is projected to look much like Japan does today, with nearly a quarter of its population aged 65 and over. When compared globally, the United States is projected to have a relatively younger population in 2030 than Japan, Canada, and many European countries, including Germany, Italy, France, and Spain. These countries will face the chow lungs of an aging population earlier than the United States. Traditionally, there have been far more women than men at older ages, because women tend to live longer. Sex ratios, which reflect this gender imbalance, represent the number of men for every 100 women in a specific age group. A ratio of 100 indicates a perfect balance between the sexes, with the same number of men as there are women. Currently, sex ratios for the 65-plus population are 79, while those for the 85-plus population are just 54. In other words, these age groups are heavily skewed toward women. The latest projections calculate that these imbalances will shrink somewhat in coming decades, largely because of rising life expectancy among men. The greatest gains will be at the oldest ages. Sex ratios for the 65-plus population are projected to rise from 79 to 86 between now and 2060, while ratios for the 85-plus population will rise from 54 to 65. The changing sex ratio imbalance has implications for later life support and caregiving since it affects the availability of partners and the likelihood of forming a new relationship among the widowed or divorced, especially at older ages. Dependency ratios are another way to look at the changing age composition of the population. They indicate the dependent population's potential burden on the working age population, in other words, how many people do the working age support. Of course, changes in the typical working age and retirement age can change the relevance of these ratios. The youth dependency ratio, defined here as the number of children under 18 for every 100 adults aged 18 to 64, is projected to fall slightly in coming decades. We project that by 2060 there will be just over one child for every three working age adults. This is substantially lower than the youth dependency ratio in 1960, when the United States had been experiencing nearly 15 years of a baby boom. That year, there were about two children for every three working age adults. The old age dependency ratio, in contrast, is expected to rise considerably. In coming decades, the United States is expected to shift from a youth dependent population toward an old age dependent one. Between 2010 and 2060, the old age dependency ratio is projected to nearly in other words, there will be 41 people aged 65 and older for every 100 workage adults between 18 and 64 years. Another way of looking at this is, in 2020, there are projected to be about three and a half working age adults for every older person Eli Jibble for Social Security. By 2060, that number is expected to fall to two and a half working age adults for every older person eligible for Social Security. 
Although total dependency ratios are projected to be no higher than they were in 1960, the rise of old age. Dependency ratios will affect social security beneficiaries. Non-Hispanic whites are projected to remain the single largest race or ethnic group for the next 40 years. As the population ages and grows more slowly in coming decades, the United States is projected to continue becoming a more racially and ethnically pluralistic society. This is not a new pattern. In 1900, roughly one in eight people in the United States were a race other than white. That figure began to rise in 1970. By 1990, nearly one in five people were a race other than white and over the next decade, that proportion continued to rise to one in four people. In coming decades, the racial composition of the population is projected to change even further, so one in three Americans, 32% of the population, is projected to be a race other than white by 2060. The fastest growing racial or ethnic group in the United States is people who are two or more races, who are projected to grow some 200% by 2060. The next fastest is the Asian popular tie-in, which is projected to double, followed by Hispanics whose population will nearly double within the next four decades. In contrast, the only group projected to shrink is the non-Hispanic white popular tie-in. Between 2016 and 2060, the non-Hispanic white population is expected to contract by about 19 million people, from 198 million to 179 million, even as the total. The decline is driven largely by falling birth rates and a rising number of deaths over time as the non-Hispanic white population ages. The crude birth rate for non-Hispanic whites is projected to be 9 per 1,000 people by 2030, compared with a crude death rate of almost 12 per 1,000 people. In other words, more non-Hispanic whites are projected to die than will be born. Nonetheless, non-Hispanic whites are projected to remain the single largest race group throughout the next 40 years. Beginning in 2045, however, they are no longer projected to make up the majority of the U.S. population. About 44 million people in the United States, around 1 in 7, were born in another count try. However, most residents have immigration in their family history. Some 36 million Americans can look to their parents to find it, while 235 million, or about 75% of Americans, can look back to their grandparents' generation or earlier. Although it is easy to think of the foreign-born as a single population, they are made up of people from different countries and backgrounds. Of the 44 million foreign-born living in the United States in 2016, just under one-half were Hispanic, Table 3, consistent with estimates from the American Community Survey which show that the majority of foreign-born in the United States came from Latin America and the Caribbean. About one-quarter of the foreign-born population in 2016 was Asian, and a little under one-fifth was non-Hispanic white consistent with estimates from the American Community Survey which show that the majority of foreign-born in the United States came from Latin America and the Caribbean. About one-quarter of the foreign-born population in 2016 was Asian, and a little under one-fifth was non-Hispanic white. These numbers reflect the current total or stock of foreign-born living in the United States. The largest send ING regions of migrants have been changing recently, however. Of those who arrived before 2000, most came from Latin American countries, followed by Asian countries. Since 2010, that trend has reversed with Asia replacing Latin America as the largest sending region of migrants to the United States.